Okay, hi guys. Uh, today's uh, uh, lecture is on what is methodology. Now, I've covered in another paper, uh, sorry, another lecture, uh, the difference between method and methodology. But in that uh, lecture, in that video, I didn't really discuss what is methodology. And so today I'm going to uh, talk about what is methodology and mainly to answer this main question. Uh, what does my teacher or examiner mean by the question, what is your methodology? So sometimes you are going to write a paper and you might be asked, so what's your methodology? Or they might say, hey, your methodology is weak. What do they mean by that? And uh, that's, that's something that I'm, that, that's the focus today. But like how I've been doing in these videos, I don't really define methodology, but I give a general framework of how methodology is understood by different departments and perhaps by different people. And then hopefully you can see where uh, you fit in, uh, where your department fits in, or even what do you think your examiners mean. And in fact, you could even ask your examiners what exactly do they mean by methodology. So I'm going to give you about four or five uh, uh, understandings of what is methodology and uh, then you can look at it and uh, take it from there. <laughs> One thing that uh, what it means to, uh, to say what is your methodology, it means how do you collect your data. Okay? So this is a, a key uh, uh, understanding of methodology. It applies mainly for uh, missiological, pastoral and sometimes uh, religious studies papers which have empirical empirical evidence, uh, empirical uh, field research, uh, empirical data. The, the main thing is because in research, there, uh, we've, we talked about how there are two kinds of research. One is empirical research and one is textual research, the one that goes to the library. So the empirical research, how do you collect your data, that is what it means, that is what some people mean, what is your methodology. How are you going to collect your data? So in most cases, this will mean uh, in the field research ones, you will be asked, are you going to use quantitative approaches, qualitative approaches, will you have a questionnaire, um, what are your data gathering tools, how will you do your assessment, those kind of questions will be asked. Uh, if you're going to have a survey, how, uh, how many, what kind of questions will you have, those all have to do with how you gather your data. Now, in our class and even in this lecture, we will not be spending time with empirical research. That is a completely separate component. And a lot has been written, and I'm sure your departments will be dealing with that with you. But that's, if somebody asks you what is your methodology, just uh, that it could be, if you're, especially from the practical departments, the practical theological departments like missiology and pastoral, they probably mean how do you collect your data? What is your empirical field research process. That's what they mean by uh, what is your methodology. Uh, so we're not going to do much more on that. That's just what that is. So second, uh, the second meaning, uh, what is your methodology? The other thing that some faculty or examiners ask is what tools or what systems are you using to interpret or exegete uh, scripture and texts? What, what methodology are you using to interpret, let's uh, say, John's Gospel or the book of Genesis? Now, this is very popular with biblical studies people. Uh, we, they have, uh, uh, if, if you are from biblical studies, you'll know there are many different ways of interpreting scripture. One is the historical method. One is the literary method. And I think that's all my knowledge of biblical studies is. But these are two different methods. Oh yeah, there's form criticism and there's redaction criticism, there is source criticism. Much of it, much of those what I've just said are part of historical critical method. Uh, but the literary method is quite unique in terms of uh, its difference from the historical method. But these different methods of interpreting scripture are me your methodology. So what methodology are you using to interpret scripture? So, uh, so if you were to say, I will be using a literary historical method or I will be using a cultural theological method for reading scripture. Uh, that would be your methodology. So if, if let's say you're, you're, you're in a 
uh, in a biblical studies uh, discipline, it's very easy. What is your methodology? I'm using the literary criticism method, or I'm using a hybrid uh, historical plus literary method. Or if you're in theology and you're using a biblical portion as part of your method, you could say, I am using a biblical theological method, which means, or, or actually, no, no, the, the better one is the theological exegetical method, which means that I will be using a theological analysis of the text rather than an exegetical historical literary analysis of the text, where the focus is the ideas or the themes that derive from the text rather than uh, the exegetical, the historical exegetical comments that are usually made in commentaries. So that too is a method of interpreting scripture. And most theologians will apply a theological exegesis, a theological ex exegetical method for their uh, work. In fact, what's interesting is many practical and missiological departments also use theological exegesis, but they don't really think of their method as theological exegesis. The danger is that those departments can think of themselves as, oh, uh, oh, I know what the Bible is saying, this is what the Bible is saying, and simply apply it uh, to their context without really thinking that one method of interpreting scriptures may radically transform the way a meaning is generated from the Bible. So if I use a literary method, I would get a different meaning from, let's say, if I was to use a historical method, or if I was to use a theological method. So being clear about what your methodology is, especially in view of interpreting scripture and text, the scriptural text is the, the, the other thing that you need to be thinking about when you talk about what is your methodology. The third thing that uh, to, when people say what's your methodology, they probably mean or they're probably thinking about is, what are the underlying concepts and ideologies that shape your theological answers? Now this is a bit more than just uh, the exegetical tools or, or, or the, the, the system that you're using to interpret the text. It's more to do with worldviews and presuppositions and uh, ideologies that shape your thinking. This is where theologians and especially theological students have to do a lot of their work and analysis in. Uh, we who are in the theological department spend a lot of time talking about the concepts that shape other concepts. And uh, if you were to study one theologian, we don't just look at what he's saying, we're looking at the ideas that influenced him. And not only the idea, even the context that influenced him, thinking of that time. So this, so when it says, what is your methodology, it, it asks the question, what is your methodology? Or yours means you as a writer. Are you aware of the influences or the systems that you're using to interpret uh, uh, or, or not so much interpret, but shape the answers that you're giving. So in this case, a simple way of looking at it is, the, let's say, the postmodern uh, readings. So I will be using a postmodern worldview to answer my, uh, to give my uh, answer. Or uh, let's say, uh, uh, it could be, I'm giving a theological postmodern reading. You know, that's one way. Very popular amongst ecumenicals is a post-colonial reading. I'm going to provide a post-colonial answer to whatever context or whatever situation that I find myself. The other one is a liberative. These are systems, these are ideologies that shape our theological answers. Some of them are intentionally placed, like liberative. These are concepts that, uh, uh, that govern our thinking. So my methodology is liberative. Or uh, they are subconscious. So I may be subconsciously following... Uh, the modernist framework, because my training is in that, whereas uh, I should be moving towards a postmodern framework. Now, I know this sounds really weird and uh, alien, especially for those who don't uh, use these concepts, and especially for departments that are not theological, but if I could just simply say it, it's, it's understanding the ideology that shapes your answer. Now, this applies to all disciplines, yet most disciplines aren't really uh, uh, focusing on this. So, for instance, um, any biblical scholar who is using their evangelical framework to analyze their text, which means the word of God is true, the belief that the word of God is true, that God is knowable, that Jesus is the weight of salvation, if these are the presuppositions that shape your thinking, the way you interpret the text will be influenced by those presuppositions. Many biblical scholars think that 
By just doing pure exegesis, you can get to pure meaning of the text, not recognizing the importance of presuppositions in gathering meaning from the text. The same thing applies to uh, missiological or pastoral disciplines where uh, the concepts, uh, your agendas, uh, yeah, that's another word, your agendas shape what you're trying to get from scripture or what you're trying to, the answers that you're giving. So, uh, for missions, this idea of the missional understanding is one of those cyclical things. You know, it's like, is the Bible about mission? Yes. Is everything about mission? Yes. And so, because I believe that everything is about mission, when I read the Bible, I will find that everything is about mission. Which came first? Is the Bible about mission and so I find that? Or did I believe that the Bible is about mission and so I find what I want in scriptures? This, this uh, duality or this, uh, uh, what, what would you call this? This interplay between presupposition and interpretation uh, is not adequately addressed in missiology in terms of its hermeneutics from what I have seen. But that kind of stuff would be the ideology that shapes your thinking or your theological answers. In pastoral disciplines, it could be the um, uh, counseling or the psychological framework or the psychological worldview that you're employing when you're using, you, when you're viewing humanity, when you're viewing reality. Uh, what concept of human are you applying uh, and, uh, and it will affect your counselling. So is a human being very similar to an animal and so you could use behavioural therapies because you have an animal view of human being. Is your human being unique and created by God and so therefore special? Uh, then you'll have a special technique of, uh, of uh, counselling. Now that's just over, uh, talk my head, I wish I had better examples of that. But here, so again to summarize, number three would be the concepts or the ideologies that shape your theological answers or your proposals. Relatedly, uh, so number four you could put it, or you could put it at 3B, but let's, let's, let's just call it four, is when somebody asks you what is your methodology, it could mean which theo theologian or which uh, theoretical model are you using to shape your thinking? Now earlier I had talked about, uh, just before, point number three, I had said what concepts or ideologies shape your thinking. But this is a bit more pointed. Are you using one particular framework or one particular thinking uh, to uh, focus your uh, uh, paper? So let's go to counselling for instance. And let's say if you were to employ Freud's model of counselling for Christian counselling. Now that's really weird, I doubt uh, you could do that uh, satisfactorily for today's context. But let's say you were trying to do that. Freud's concept of counselling as a dialogue partner for my concept of counselling. I'm drawing from Freud. Now that also is your methodology. I'm taking someone's method of doing counselling and I'm, I'm, I'm learning from it, I'm drawing from it. So it's, it's not just a worldview or an ideology because Freud would have a worldview and an ideology. But it's actually taking what Freud said and applying it to counselling. The same thing would apply to, let's say, biblical studies where you would say N.T. Wright's interpretation of Paul is my paradigm for interpreting Paul. So I'm applying N.T. Wright's model for interpretation for my interpretation. So it's not just a general worldview issue, but it's uh, something that's more pointed. I'm taking one scholar or one methodology from one person. In theology, this is uh, quite common. We take a Barthian understanding or a Calvinist understanding or or Moltmann, or even contemporary scholars like Van Hooser, uh, we take somebody's thinking and apply it for ourselves. Um, I, for instance, in my dissertation, huh, buy my book, buy my book, no. <laughs> I, I, for instance, in my book, use Chenchaya's understanding, Chenchaya's definition of religion as a model for constructing religion. So I use Chenchaya's methodology to construct my own methodology. I didn't really repeat his work, but I drew from it. I drew very strongly from his work. That's what we mean. So it's not simply a worldview or concept that shapes you, but it is a particular theologian or a particular model that shapes your thinking. The idea is that is there one scholar or one idea, whether Christian or non-Christian, who has said something and the way he says it or the way she says it is so good or so valuable that you can draw from it uh, for your paper. That would be the part four 
of what is your methodology. I am using Kant's understanding of, or I am using Barth's understanding of, or I am using N.T. Wright's understanding of. So their understanding, their models, their definitions shape our paper. Now, the other uh, more uh, basic understanding uh, of the question, what is your methodology, is simply, what is the structure of your paper? Now, I know this is a very broad understanding of methodology, or broad or specific, I'm, I'm not sure. But uh, in this case, some examiners actually, when they say, what's your methodology, they mean, what is your chapter division? Or what is your structure, your article structure? So, it will be good to clarify, if somebody asks you what your methodology, do they mean that or do they mean one of the other ideas that I've mentioned above. But so here would be your outline and, um, and your structure uh, of how you address. Now, rather than say it simplistically, it actually applies to certain disciplines differently. And I'll give you an example from Richard Osmer's Guide to Practical Theology. There's a, there's a scholar called Richard Osmer. The caption, I hope, will give you the name uh, correctly. And he is given a guide to practical theology, and he's given four, um, uh, st a structure where there are four points in any practical theology that you're supposed to do. So like a structure of a paper. The first part, Richard Rasmus says, is a description. Then the second part is interpretation. The third part is normative. Uh, normative meaning uh, uh, what systems govern our thinking. Uh, oh yeah, this, this could be the biblical view, the biblical view that is norm, a uh, norm for our lives. Um, and then the pragmatic uh, concept, the idea that uh, here is a concept that I've studied, now I'm applying it to my context, the pragmatic, the useful, the valuable, how does it apply? So Richard Osmond's Guide 1, Description 2, Interpretation 3, Normative 4, Pragmatic, is actually a structure, a methodology, that the practical theologians are using nowadays in SIAX uh, for uh, structuring their, uh, their work, their, their papers, especially their theses. So when somebody says, what's your methodology, they might be meaning, what is your outline or what's the structure of your paper? Now I'll give you another alternative uh, structure. And the alternative structure would be, I'll give you an uh, example in theology. Uh, we first have the description. So let's say we're taking one scholar or one doctrine, we have the description and then we have the um, evaluation of what we have just described. Now the evaluation of what we have described has two parts. One is the evaluative criteria. On what basis are you evaluating? And then we have the evaluation. So, uh, so for instance, if you say the Bible is an important way of determining what is right and wrong in a person, uh, that would be the evaluative criteria. So, uh, and then we have the evaluation, the, the, the critique of that which we were describing. So description, evaluation, which includes evaluative criteria and evaluation. And then we have the uh, construction, where in view of the evaluation, we then say something new, where we say, okay, so therefore this is what I'm saying. And then we have the application. Uh, uh, or let's say... The, Perhaps in what we mean is the implication of what we are saying, of how it, actually I think we say application, the, how this applies for the church, uh, or how is this useful for the church. So the theology department, we tend to, not every, every time, we'll have a description, evaluation, construction, and, uh, and application. So that would be our system, our structure. It's similar to Richard Osmer's guide, but it's also different. So that would be my methodology, my, my, the way my paper is structured. Now, not everybody, not all your examiners will look at that way methodology. I have a feeling that when somebody says, what's your methodology, they could mean any of these above points, one, two, three, four. They, they could mean, uh, how do you collect your data? Or they could mean, what is the interpretative tools? Or they could mean, what is your theological system? Or are you using one scholar in particular? Or even this fifth one, what is your structure? So I feel that if ever somebody asks you, if let's say your department head or your examiner or your mentor asks you, you need to strengthen your methodology, ask them what they mean. And it could be one of these five things or it could be all five or it could be two of these things that they want to, uh, they want to uh, fix or they want you to fix. And I have a feeling 
that if you ask them more pointedly, what do you mean by methodology? Do you mean how do I collect my data? Or do you mean my interpretive tools? Or do you mean my system? Then I think it will push them to be clearer about what they mean, rather than just use a blanket term methodology. Perhaps it will help them to say, okay, actually this is what I'm talking about. Uh, I'm talking about your structure, your chapter structure. And they will say, oh, okay, I'm going to fix my chapter structure and that, that's what it's going to be. So I hope that was helpful. It's just a survey of how we understand methodology in academics from different departments. And I hope that something of this will help you to be clear about yourself. What is your methodology? But it will also help you to understand what other people mean when they say, what is your methodology? So I hope this helped. Uh, thanks a lot.